Hey y'all, it's your girl LaContia Williams, and right now I have with me General Overseer D'Artagnan T. Jamerson. I serve as General Overseer for the Children and Youth Division of Full Gospel. All right, so before the cameras were rolling, he asked me what this interview was going to be about, and I said random stuff, and he replied to me. Let's do it. Let's do some random stuff. So, who has been one influential minister, uh, ministry leader in your life? Ooh, one, the yes. late Bishop Otis A. Floyd was my godfather. Okay. He was the original second presiding bishop of our fellowship uh, and helped raise me uh, uh, all of my life. Okay, and how did you know that you were called to serve in ministry? Ooh. Man, so it's, it's levels to that. All right. Because uh, I was on drums. Okay. okay, I started with the fellowship on drums. Okay. Uh, then uh, when I accepted my call to preach, uh, my pastor, Bishop Otis Floyd, set me down for three years to serve as a deacon uh, okay. before he allowed me to move into the ministry, kind of like Jesus did with the disciples, you know. Um, and then uh, I accepted uh, the call um, one night in the living room of my apartment. I've been reading my word and I said, okay, God, I believe this is you, but if it is, I asked for a Gideon experience. I said, I need you to send somebody to me to tell me that I'm supposed to preach. Mm -hmm. The next day, I'm at Bible study and prayer meeting at New Jerusalem. I'm at the altar, I'm praying, and Brenda Echo Smith walks up to me, God rest her soul, and she says, the Lord said you've been waiting on someone to tell you to preach, that you're supposed to preach, and the rest is history. Wow, that's yeah. a pretty awesome story. You know, you got lucky because a lot of times we'll ask God, like, God, please send me a direct and clear sign. And God and it's, is like, it's, it's, it's clear as mud. Yeah, that was pretty right, awesome. Right, I but it that. was amazing. And I thanked him because uh, the, the, the caveat to that is I prayed inaudibly, which means that only God could hear the prayer, Yeah. which means only he could answer the prayer. Uh, and that was what was so magnificent about it for my whole experience. So what about if people want to receive that direct and clear answer from God? How would they be able to pray inaudibly? Like, what is that? Is, is, it's simply it praying from, from your heart. It's simply praying from your heart as you're thinking the words and you're praying it from your heart without mouthing the words. Yeah. And then that is them having an opportunity to practice hearing God's voice. Far too often uh, we take 20, 30 minutes and we travail and we pray and we, we snot and we sweat. Uh, and then we get done talking to God and we get up and we go on about our day. But I challenge people at my ministry uh, or even the young people that I lead that however long you pray, take that same amount of time to sit and listen because God is always speaking, but we're not always listening. Awesome. I love that. And you know what? For my last question, I want to know um, which character in the Bible do you relate to the most and Paul. why? Paul. The Apostle Paul, because okay. one of my life scriptures is 1 Corinthians chapter 9, around 19, 20, 21 in there, where he says, I became all things to all men so that I could by all means save some. Mm. That was at the beginning of the church. And Paul knew not everyone would listen to the gospel, but it was his job to get the gospel to them. So my desire is that wherever I am, I take the gospel with me and whoever wants to come is welcome. And whoever chooses not to won't be because I didn't give it to him. Absolutely. I love it. Love it. Thank you so much for Absolutely. interviewing with me today. My pleasure. Thank All you right. for having me. Absolutely.